non variceal upper gastrointestinal bleeding in adults carries significant morbidity, mortality, and a health economic burden, despite advances in its management over the past two decades. The effectiveness of therapeutic endoscopy in reducing mortality, rebleeding, and the need for surgery for this condition was established 20 years ago. The optimum time frame for the performance of endoscopy, however, remains unclear, both in relation to patient outcomes and in terms of the economic implications of providing timely access to endoscopy. Consensus guidelines recommend that all endoscopies for this condition should be performed within 24 hours. An association between earlier endoscopy and a reduction in mortality in higher risk patients has been demonstrated so far only by one recent single-centered retrospective observational study. A systematic review in 2001 examined the impact of time to endoscopy in this condition, which included four small randomized clinical trials, none of which were able to demonstrate any improvement in clinical outcomes as a result of early endoscopy. Non-randomized studies have produced conflicting results with some demonstrating low rebleeding rates and need for surgery through earlier endoscopy and others are suggesting either no clinical benefit or even an increased risk of complications associated with earlier endoscopy. There are no randomized studies of sufficient power to address this question. In the largest observational study so far, Gerard et al. addressed the issue of relationship between time to endoscopy and clinically important outcomes following admission to hospital with non-variceal upper gastrointestinal bleeding. They raised the following questions. Does earlier endoscopy reduce mortality, including those patients requiring therapeutic endoscopy? Does it influence re-bleeding, the need for surgery, and or radiological intervention, red cell transfusion, or length of hospital stay? Their findings are reported in their study entitled Outcomes Following Acute Non-Variceal upper gastrointestinal bleeding in relation to time to endoscopy results from a nationwide study in the August issue of endoscopy. Despite the established efficacy of therapeutic endoscopy, the optimum time frame for performing endoscopy in patients with non-variceal upper gastrointestinal bleeding remains unclear. The aim of the current audit study was to examine the relationship between time to endoscopy and clinical outcomes in patients presenting with non-variceal upper gastrointestinal bleeding. This study was a prospective national audit performed in 212 UK hospitals. Regression models examine the relationship between time to endoscopy and mortality, re-bleeding, need for surgery, and length of hospital stay. In 4,478 patients, earlier endoscopy, less than 12 hours, was not associated with a lower mortality or need for surgery compared with later, that is, greater than 24 hours endoscopy. In patients receiving therapeutic endoscopy, there was a non-significant trend towards an increase in re-bleeding associated with later endoscopy, with a converse seen in patients not requiring therapeutic endoscopy. Later endoscopy, greater than 24 hours, was associated with an increase in risk-adjusted length of hospital stay. The authors conclude that earlier endoscopy was not associated with a reduction in mortality or need for surgery. 
However, it was associated with an increased efficiency of care and potentially improved control of hemorrhage in high-risk patients, supporting the routine use of early endoscopy unless specific contraindications exist. These results may help inform the debate about emergency endoscopy service provision.